uh, I'll let Jessica go ahead and kick it all off. Yeah, thank you guys for all coming out here. Um, I feel like I should be in my bathing suit and, you know, swim trunks instead of standing here <laughs> on the half shell. But um, thank you all for coming today. I'm Jessica. I'm one of the associates with Environment New Hampshire. Um, and this is really great to see you all coming out for the release of Testing the Waters. Um, I am joined here today by Brian Warburton from Parks and Recreation, Joni Connor of um, the Department of Environmental Services, um, and then we're also here with Jerry Kern of the Sierra Club, Preston Curtis of um, Surf Rider Foundation, right there. Yeah. Um, so we're all here today, um, and you know, as millions of Americans, you know, in these next couple months are flocking to the beaches, we're here at Hampton Beach uh, to release Testing the Waters. It's a report on the water quality. Um, it's a guide to vacation beaches and the water quality of vacation beaches. Um, this is a, the 20th annual report from the National Resources Defense Council that we'll be releasing here today. Um, so our beaches do continue to suffer from serious water pollution that puts swimmers at risk. Um, and across the country, the number of closings um, that have to do around oceans, bays, and Great Lakes beaches are, you know, also, they're reaching up to 18,000 closings. Um, and this is the sixth highest year in the last 20 years that the National Resources Defense Council has been putting out this report. Um, you know, in New Hampshire, though, there's a little bit of a different story. The beach closings and the advisories have actually dropped. Um, so, if you think about, there have been 12 beach closings and health advisories, um, and that is an 8% drop from the 13 closings and advisories that happened in 2008. Um, but that being said, yeah, yeah, that's really great news for our swimmers out here today. Um, but that being said, you know, meanwhile, there is, since July 23rd, um, the oil disaster in the Gulf, which has since, you know, caused different advisories and closings and the notices that have um, reached upwards of 1,755 closings because of the different disasters going on down there. So that's to keep in mind as well this summer. Um, so when families head to the beach this summer, it's you know no surprise that they shouldn't have to worry about swimming in polluted water that can make them sick. Um, and you know we're happy to see that New Hampshire has taken the steps to prevent and mitigate beach water pollution and protect our public health. So this report, um, it uses the data from the Environmental Protection Agency to um, put together a list of 200 beaches and give them a rating all based on a star system, a five star system. The ratings are based from, you know, monitoring frequency. Um, they're based from uh, different public notification systems and also the water quality of the beaches. Now, um, here in New Hampshire, uh, this is the results that we've gotten from this report. Hampton Beach, actually here, um, the state park has received a five-star quality reading. Uh, some of the best quality waters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, in addition to that, we've seen that the Wallace Sands Beach, um, just right down here on Wallace Road, also has received a five-star quality reading. So another yeah. applause for that. Yeah. So, you know, you can also see that um, just down the road, Wallace Sands Beach SP received a four-star reading. Um, so that's really great news. Um, the thing with beach water pollution is it, you know, it makes swimmers vulnerable to a range of waterborne illnesses. And these range from stomach flu, hepatitis, pink eye, um, respiratory ailments. Um, and this is really especially uh, you know, noticeable for young children and senior citizens people with uh, weak immune systems. So really, when we're looking at this, the best way to protect our swimmers from this kind of pollution is just to prevent it. So um, federal, state, and local governments can make this a priority uh, by requiring better controls on stormwater um, drainage and sewage. Um, so these are the two largest sources for the beach water pollution. What happens is when it, there's a heavy rainfall, um, a lot of the water runoff that comes from our um, parking lots, from our, you know, from our rooftops and pavements and driveways, highways, this all runs off and it carries a lot of pollutants including heavy metals and petroleum and um, just a number of different things that go into construction debris and um, often chemicals and 
animal waste. And this, when it comes, happens in coastal areas, runs off all of these surfaces and enters our drinking water and our beaches. Um, and when it does make its way to the ocean, um, it can result in an overwhelming of the systems that we have. So then we have, on top of all of this runoff water, um, different partial um, sewage and raw sewage that has been entering the beaches. So really, to protect our beaches, we need to somehow um, initially just reduce the amount of stormwater runoff and these sewage overflows from the get-go. Um, and really, to make a significant step, we want to ensure that the EPA requires um, a few steps here. So new development should be using low-impact design. Um, we need to be creating stormwater standards for the different um, suburban areas. And we also should be asking um, that we are reducing the amount of runoff coming from the existing sources. Um, Environment New Hampshire urges the EPA to make stormwater rulemaking as strong as possible. Um, and then we can reduce the stormwater pollution and make America's beaches safe and so we can have more five-star ratings like here at Hampton Beach. Uh, so, thank you so much for coming out. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Brian Warburton of the Parks and Recreation. Boy, is this great. Give everybody a hand. You know, I was telling Sarah, and I 